Welcome back to another video of Wake Up With GNC Kids. Today we are learning all about Daniel and the lion's den. And I have a special guest for you. His name is Leo the lion. So everyone say hi to Leo. He's so cute, isn't he? And I'm gonna put him right here and he's gonna listen with us to learn our Bible lesson today. Also, we have something really cool today for our video. We're gonna start off with worship. So get ready to worship with Sarah. Are you guys ready to worship and shine our lights? Come on, follow along. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Come on, everybody, clap along. Let's praise Jesus. Let's shine our lights.
Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are. challenge. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. So this week's challenge is for you to find 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 before I have the chance to draw a line. All right, so you have your Bibles? Are we ready to go? All right. We're ready? Let me get my materials. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Look for Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three. All right, I'm there. Let us know in the comments down below if you got there before I did. All right, so let's read it all together. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Isn't that amazing that God protects us? All right. Let's do it again, but with the action. Everyone get up on your feet and follow after me. Are we ready? Let's go. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Let's do it one more time, all right? Let's go. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse three. Good job guys, keep practicing your memory verse and continue to film yourselves and show us. We can't wait to see this week's memory verse. Great job guys. It's craft time with teacher Loretta. This week we're gonna make a craft to help you with your Bible memorization. What you're gonna need is some computer paper, scissors, markers, and crayons. We can get started now. You're gonna take your computer paper and you're gonna fold it to look like a triangle. And then there's extra paper here that we have to cut off like this. After you've cut off the extra paper, this is what it should look like. And this is opened. You take your four corners and you're gonna fold them into the middle like this. Now we're going you have your paper like this, but we're gonna have to flip it over and you bring your four corners in like this. Once we folded the four corners in, we fold it in half like this, and then we put our fingers inside to shape it up. And now it's time to do our decorating. Now you could use your pencil crayons and your markers and you can draw God Rescues, a lion, Daniel, and King Darius. You open it up and you can write different numbers on each triangle. Okay kids, I'm gonna show you how to use your pocket memory verse. Let's see if I could find some help here. Hey, Pastor Victoria, do you want to help me? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is how it works. You're going to have to choose God Rescue, Lion, Daniel, or King Darius. 
I'm gonna choose God Rescues. Okay, so God Rescues is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you choose a number in there. I'm gonna choose number one. One. I'm gonna choose number five. Number five, so let's see what number five has. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. Hmm. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Is awesome that right? Awesome job, Pastor Victoria. You got it right. Have fun playing with your pocket memory words. Now it's time to dive into God's word. I hope everybody enjoyed the worship, the craft, and the memory verse game. So now we're gonna grab our Bibles and we're gonna turn to Daniel chapter six. And we're gonna continue learning about Daniel and the lion's den. And we're gonna learn how God is our protector and we need to keep our focus on him at all times. Don't ever get distracted by what's happening around in the world or what people are saying or fears that might, that might come up in, in your life, but continue to focus on God and you're gonna continue to gain a confidence in him like never before. So let's start. So King Darius, he has 120 provinces in the land and he has all these high officers and Daniel was one of them. He, Daniel and two other men were supervisors over all the high officers. And, the other, and other things for the king. And you know what? Daniel showed the king that he was so such a good worker that he ended up being promoted to watch, over, almost, to watch over the entire kingdom. And what happened was that the other officers got jealous of him and they did not like Daniel. And so what they started to do was they started to try to find faults in Daniel. And they tried to find things that he did wrong, but they couldn't find anything wrong that he did. You want to know why? Because Daniel was a faithful, responsible, and trustworthy man. That's what it tells us in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. At the end of the verse, that's what it tells us that Daniel is. So he was faithful, and he was trustworthy, and he was responsible. But you know what? Daniel was faithful first to God. He was so faithful to God. Dan, what Daniel would do each and every day was he would kneel, kneel down in front of his window. He would open them up and he would pray and thank God three times a day, every single day. He did not miss a day. So he was faithful to God first and foremost. So the other administrators, what happened was they go to the king and they tell the king to place a law for 30 days that no one could worship any other God except the king and bow down only to him and worship him only. And if they would worship any other God, they would be thrown into a lion's den. And when Daniel heard that news, what do you think was his first reaction? He didn't get scared. He didn't get worried. He didn't fear. He didn't say, I'm going to stop praying for 30 days and then I'll just continue after. No, Daniel continued to stay faithful to God and he continued to pray. As soon as this is what it tells us in verse 10. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. So Daniel did not stop praying. He continued to be faithful to God, even though it meant that he was going to be thrown into a lion's den. I know this lion looks cute and cuddly, but lions are pretty scary when you look at them. They have a big roar. Can you roar? I want you to say your loudest roar, as loud as you can. So just imagine how big and scary these lions are. And Daniel wasn't afraid because he knew who God is. He knew the God that he served. Daniel knew that God is his protector and that God is his God and there's no other God because you know what? Worshiping other gods and praying to other gods is a sin and that's not and it wasn't right and Daniel knew that. He knew he had to stay faithful to God and that he couldn't go he couldn't go against God. And plus Daniel loved God so so much. So let's continue reading what happens. So the officials went together to Daniel's house and they found him praying and asking for God's help. So look at that. Daniel was praying and he was asking for God's help. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. 
Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes, the king replied. That decision stands. It is an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. Then they told the king, that man, Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. I find it so cool that they even added in saying that he's praying three times a day. Daniel said, I'm going to stick to what I was doing from the very beginning. I'm going to continue praying whatever it takes. No matter what they say, no matter what they do to me, I'm going to continue praying to my God because he is faithful and he loves me so much and he is going to protect me. And even if he doesn't, even if, even if Daniel would have died in the lion's den, you know what? He knew he was going to heaven to spend his eternity with God. So let's continue reading. So the king was very sad that, it, that he had to throw Daniel in the lion's den, that he even tried to f find a way to save him, but there was no way of saving Daniel. They had, so they went ahead and they arrested him and they threw him into the lion's den. And before closing the, do before closing the den with a huge stone, they, the king told Daniel said, may your God whom you serve so faithfully rescue you. So even the king wanted the God to rescue Daniel. And even the king knew that Daniel served God faithfully. So continue to live a life for God. And you know what? Others around you are going to see how faithful you are to him. Continue to pray, continue to read your word, and continue to spend time in his presence. And you're going to see the difference you're going to make around for the people that, that you come in contact with each and every day. Your friends are going to see a difference. Family members are going to see a difference. They're going to know that there is something different about you because you are serving God with all your heart and because you love him so much. God changes people from the inside and out. So let's continue reading. So the stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And I want you to pay attention to this. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Read, remember that, no one could rescue Daniel. All, each seal that was on that stone represented that no one was allowed to rescue Daniel. But we know a God who is able to rescue us out of every situation. So then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused to eat, drink, and he didn't even sleep because he was so worried about Daniel. Then the very next morning, the king rushes back to the stone and he moves it and he calls out to Daniel and he says, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God, whom you serve so faithfully, able to rescue you from the lions? And what do you think Daniel answered? This is the part where we rejoice. We rejoice because we know that our God is our protector and he protects us from every evil thing, from the things that happen in this world. He has his hands upon his children because he loves us so much. So Daniel answers, long live the king. My God sent his angels to shut the mouths of lions so that they would not hurt me for I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. And the king was so happy. In, in the Bible, in verse 23, it tells us he was overjoyed. So he was more than happy. He was overjoyed. So over and above. So he would, he, I'm sure he was crying. He was just so happy that God rescued Daniel. And so he ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den and not a scratch was found on him because God, because Daniel trusted in his God. So kids, trust in God with all your heart, with everything that you have. Continue to trust in him because he is never going to leave your side. Continue to seek him with all your heart because he is there with you. No matter what's happening, God is there. Even if it might seem the worst time in the world, God is with you. The king gave orders to arrest the men who had tried to accuse Daniel. And they got thrown into the lion's den. So let's continue. Now, this is where everything just comes together. Now Daniel stood up. He continued to worship God. He continued to pray, even though it meant that he was going to be thrown into a lion's den. And this changed the course of the king. Now this is what the king tells to all the people. 
peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout the kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rules will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Now focus on that. Go to, it's in, sorry, I forgot to say the verse, but it starts at verse 26. And that's, and read that out loud with your parents. Say, for he is the living God. So this is the king, the king that had just put a law out saying that you could only worship me for 30 days is telling his people that God is the true living God and that he will endure forever, that he performs miraculous signs, that he rescues his people and that he does all these wonderful things and that he will never be destroyed. Now the king is telling the people that you got to serve this God. You got to respect and honor the God that Daniel serves. How amazing is that? One person changed the aspect of the whole place. Daniel changed an, a king's perspective on God. He changed it and that was just one person. And you know what? We see that throughout all the Bible that men of God, women of God who stood up for God and continued worshiping him, even if it meant that they were gonna die or be thrown into prison. They stood up and they, you know what? In the end, God rescued them and he was there with them no matter what. God is faithful to his people and we need to be faithful to him in every situation, in every circumstance, whatever is happening, continue to be faithful to God and he will be faithful to you. Just like Daniel, he focused, if you ever ridden a bike before, and you need to look in front of you, right? You gotta look ahead of you, but if you start to look to the right or to the left, you're gonna start going that way. Or if you look behind you, you might fall off your bike or your skateboard, scooter, whatever you're riding. But you, when, whatever, whenever you're riding your bike or whatever means of transportation you're using, you need to continue focusing on what's ahead of you, what's in front of you, not what's behind you, not what's on the side and not what's on the, on the left. Continue looking forward and then you'll get to your destination safe and sound. You won't be taking detours or anything like that. The same thing with God. Continue to look towards him and you're going to continue going on the straight path. In Proverbs 4, In Proverbs 4, 25, it says, Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. So don't get sidetracked. Fix your eyes on what lies before you. And that's God and his promises for you as children of God. And everything that he has planned for you, for your life. Continue to keep your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on what he has for you. Fix your eyes on his word. Fix your eyes on spending time in his presence, worshiping, praising him. Fix your eyes on him. And you know what? Whatever's happening around you, it just kind of just melts away. And you know, and you know that you know that God is your God and he is with you no matter what. You're gonna know as you, and you're gonna have that confidence in him, in him because you know what? As you spend time, learning about him and in his presence, you're gonna know what God he is, who he is. God is our God of freedom. He's a God of peace. He's a God of joy. He's a God of love, forgiveness, prosperity, uh, uh, healing. He's a God who's able to do all things. He is a God of breakthrough. He breaks every chain, every worry, every fear. He heals us. So that's the God we serve and so much more. And you know where we find it? All in his word all in spending time in his presence and speaking to him and getting to know him. Just like you get to know a friend, get to know God more than you know a friend. Spend time in his presence and continue seeking him with all your heart. And remember, he rescues us, he protects us, he is our protector. So don't be scared of what's happening. Don't be scared of even not of what's happening now, but of anything, don't be scared. God is with you. He is protecting you. 
Now, if you don't know this God that is our protector and you're saying, you're watching this right now and you're like, you know what? I want to know a God who protects me. I want to know him with all my heart. Well, guess what? God loves you so much and he is your protector. And all you have to do is accept Jesus into your heart. And you know what? You become a child of God. So if that's you and you say, I want to know who God is, I want to continue seeking him with all my heart and learning who he is in me. Well, let's pray this prayer together. So bow your head and close your eyes. Say, dear father, thank you that you love me so much. Thank you that you sent Jesus to die on a cross so that I can be saved. Thank you that he rose again and he conquered the grave. I am saved. I am loved and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. In Jesus name, amen. So now, welcome to the family of God. You are a child of God. And if you said that prayer, please let us know. So remember kids, God is our protector. Fix your eyes on him and continue to focus on him with everything that you have and trust God with all your heart. He is there with you. Now let's pray. So everyone bow your heads. If you're with your family, everyone hold hands and let's pray together. Dear Father, I thank you for each and every child that's listening here today. I thank you that you continue to bless them. I thank you, Father, that you continue to rise them up, Father, to be great women and men of God. Father, continue to use them in a mighty way. Be with them in their homes. Continue to protect them. Continue to lead and guide them. So Father, we thank you because you are a protector. You protect us in the midst of chaos. You protect us everywhere that we go. Thank you that you are going before us, that you never leave our side. Father, we thank you that you're always there. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So kids, we'll see you again next week. We are going to see each other soon. Continue praying that this virus is going to go away and that we're going to be able to be together again. I miss you all and I love you and we'll see you again. Bye.